today, guys, right here, your coffee coach, and I'm joined with Mark Volker, the designer and inventor of the Delta Coffee Press and a lot of the other Trinity products as you see behind me, the Trinity One and there's the Trinity Zero, as well as the Delta Cold, uh, Cold Drip. Uh, so thanks for joining us thanks, today. Mate. Going to be taking us through this, the thought process and the design behind this because on the surface it might look like an AeroPress, it's not just another AeroPress, in fact, it's very far removed from that. Um, and we're gonna show you the perfect recipe and yeah, what distinguishes it between that if anyone looks at it and goes, why would you buy yes. another AeroPress? So yes. thanks for coming on. No, no, mate, yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to come along. Uh, yeah, so this is the Delta Coffee Press. It's been around now for probably, I don't know, three or four years, I think. Um, so what I tried to do uh, with this product is solve just the uncontrolled agitation issue that you get with a lot of other immersion brewers, um, AeroPress being one of them, but there's obviously plenty of other um, immersion brewers out there. So I wanted to kind of go in a different direction, and I, I came up with what I call injection brewing. Uh, and the way that that kind of works is there's a petition in the chamber. Um, if you unscrew the lid and the plunger, you'll see that there in the middle, it's what's called the jet seal. Um, that kind of, uh, and by its purpose and function separates your coffee and water. And what that does is it means that as you use the plunger, what, what the plunger is doing is you're dosing the amount of water you want to press through the coffee bed at any given time. Um, so that opens up a bit of a new op opportunity for recipes, uh, brew times, extraction um, alternatives, I suppose. Uh, so I'll show you exactly how it works. You've got your filter basket that comes with it. Also has paper filters. We do have a stainless steel model. If you see the gray version around, that comes with the stainless steel filter, but otherwise the clear model comes with the papers. They're interchangeable, so if you have the gray model, you can still yeah. grab the papers anyway. It's just what comes in the box. Uh, so yeah, we, we're gonna place that uh, on there. If you don't mind passing the kettle, we're just gonna give that a bit of a quick rinse, just to pre-wet the paper filter. That actually just helps um, kind of holding the paper filter into its position. Uh, it makes it easier when you then go and screw it on the chamber later on. Uh, it also gives it a bit of a rinse, obviously. So we'll let that drain out. Just discard that. And now what I'm going to do, I'm now going to go to the chamber. This is the coffee chamber here at the bottom, underneath the jet seal. We've already pre-dosed some coffee. I'm using 15 grams today. It's a pretty nice benchmark to start with. Uh, with your recipes, you can either probably go as low as 12 grams and up to around 22 grams. It's a pretty generous sized basket here, actually. Um, and then with that in mind, that then will reset your water ratio that you go with. So ultimately, with the design of separating coffee and water, the one unique opportunity that presents is that you can actually make two cups at once. So I can actually go 22 grams. I can press all the water through and then keep going. Yeah. Refill it, press some more water through. So it does offer you a much more uh, larger capacity of brewing in that regard. So yep, I'm gonna dose the coffee in the bottom here. Now, as you can probably see, uh, the, the coarseness is around a medium. Like, I don't like to go too fine. Um, you are thinking a bit more like a drip coffee when you brew with the Delta rather than the more press yeah. or espresso end. So right in the middle is a good place to start. If you're familiar with like a V60 grind, uh, that's a nice little area to begin with. Now, putting the filter basket on, you make sure you do it while it's upside down here like this. Uh, don't wait till you, you know, flip <laughs> it over and put it on the, on the reservoir or the cup first. So here we go, we're gonna flip that over now. Just before I do that, I will just give it a bit of a tap just to try and level out the grounds in the bottom. And then place it on, on the scale and the, um, grab the water there. So I am measuring it. You don't, if you're out and about and you don't have a scale, there's no real dramas with that. You can actually um, use the levels on the side. So just before I do that, I'll put the plunger in. This is kind of the idea out of the box is we will now fill it to the 200 line yeah, and I love that about it is that you've used the actual measurements as opposed to just going one cup, two cup, three cup. Yeah. Because that always was an issue for me is like, well, uh, three cup doesn't even make three cups for me anyway. But yeah, right. at least I know, okay, yeah, so I'm using this ratio. I want to do a, you know, 16 um, ratio, then yep. I can measure it exactly to that. If I want to go 
lighter or, or mm -hmm, more, mm -hmm. I can change it. But I know from this, I don't have to worry about the scale so yes, much. Yes, that's right. Because it's yep. already on there. And now I will actually take it off the scale for this next part. So um, the way that the brewing ultimately works, at the moment the water is just sitting in the chamber. It's not doing anything with the, the coffee contact. But once you raise the plunger, you can see that the design allows for the water to pass through a gap as you lift the plunger up. When you press it back down again, now that the Y seal slides up into place to, to kind of conceal those holes. So that's when you create the airtight seal. I'm going to now press the, the timer so we know when we're starting. And this is like a pre-infusion. The thing, the key with the delta press, you've really got to be very gentle with mm. the press. Uh, the most common mistake and feedback we get, people under extract, because if you just go and press it through straight away, yes. all the water is going to be gone yeah. in about you know, 30 seconds. <laughs> so the most critical phase is probably this pre-infusion, uh, where you really just want to, I'm just using a little bit of pressure. I'm actually trying to keep an eye on the time. Around 30 seconds, you want that kind of first 50 mils yeah. to go through. So just you'll get the hang of how much pressure that uh, needs to be. And as you can tell, it's not, mm. not a lot of pressure at all. Um, now. To get the extraction in that optimal zone, I'm just going to let that sit now. So it's, it's obviously with brewing coffee, a lot yeah. of the time it's a slow process. Yeah. So, you know, the, the longer it takes, often you can increase your extraction. Very much the case with the Delta, it's a nice slow. Um, if you enjoy the process of making your coffee, it's a great brewer. Yeah. And you can muck around with all the pre-infusion. So you might try 100 mils to begin with. Uh, you might go with even a, a smaller amount. Uh, and then it's these, these next phases of brewing where we raise the plunger again where I now look at the measurements on the side. So in this the next phase, often I'll actually press everything through. Um, but if you wanted to kind of extend the brew out even longer, you might go with another 50 mils and then let that sit. The only thing to mind, be mindful is you don't want to overshoot. So as long as you're brewing within around the two and a half minutes to three minutes, it's usually yeah. a pretty, pretty good zone to be in. Um, so I'm just going to now press this through. And again, you can see I'm just using one finger is all it takes. So you make sure you're not exerting yourself to yeah. press it through you. There's really no need. Um, Which you, I love about it, because yeah. you don't have to get your whole elbow in to, to push it down. It's, it's a very it's light, just, it's a light, simple yeah. seal. It does come with this little dose tool. And what that does, if you don't have a scale again, each scoop is six grams of coffee. So you might go two scoops for your 12 grams, but it also then can be used to cover. So if you actually want to place your hand over it, I'd recommend putting the dose cap on. It stops any hot water, like there may be a bit yeah. of steam coming up. If you are holding your hand on there for a while, you might notice that. But of course, you can press on the edge. You don't, you're not going to feel that anyway. But we're at about two minute brew time now. So I'm just now gonna just brew, brew this and press through. The air bubbles, people are often asking about that. What's the go there? The, the thing is there is still a bit of that seal, like the, the pressure can get through. It's just like excess pressure will vent yeah. through those seals that I mentioned where the Y seal slides up. It's not necessarily a problem. Um, you know, it's, it's, still, it's still sealing, it's still pressing. Mm. So if you see that, it's nothing to be too concerned about. The last press then, so we've got, by the looks of things, about 50 to 60 mils of water left. And I'm just going to gently press that through. And while you're doing that, I'll talk a bit about the coffee because we're using a filter blend that I am still in development. It's not out yet, but I'm going to be blending. And it's uncommon really to do a filter blend. A lot of people prefer to just do a single origin um, filter roast. But I really wanted the complexity without the overpowering uh, fermentation. You know, I didn't want it to be too boozy. So we went with a Colombian anaerobic fermented coffee, but also added in just a really nice yoga chef and a Guji one to just give it that complexity whilst keeping it nice and balanced. And yeah, yeah. we'll get to try it now. Yeah, that's beautiful. right. Yeah, well, that's just pressed through and it was just on bang on three minutes yeah. um, by the time that's all gone through. So at the end, we can just throw the delta over here. Now, the thing I wanted to really try and enhance is like the brightness of the coffee. Um, having the water and coffee separated, I think that's what's achieved. That's the feedback yeah. we get from customers, which is the most important thing. It's certainly a cleaner cup too. Um, we, I've used the same no bypass filter that I use on the Trinity. So that means that the water can't yeah. jump over but, the filter. Yeah. It's got to go through that paper filter. Uh, and you can tell by the color. Yeah. It's a beautiful, it's deep, um, beautiful deep color, color. Yeah, yeah, and very, very clear on the edges. Yeah. So have a smell, see if you think that's nailed it or not. I mean, that is just, oh, I could smell that all day. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Oh, that is just lovely. I can't wait to try that yep. now. We hopefully get to yep, well, let's pour enjoy it in. some there. Here, here we go. Just rinse out my cup. No, yep, I'll do the same. Actually, I'll put this here. Don't mind just rinsing that out. Thank you.
So now I put 200 mils of water in. We should get about around 180 out, I'd imagine. Uh, we didn't weigh the yield, but the more important thing, of course, is what, what it tastes like. Yeah, that's right. I mean, the fruits, it's just so clean. Mm. Beautiful. Yep, that that's is come perfect. through. That that's, is. That's nailed mm. it. Yeah. I'll quickly like show you as well how to clean the delta at the end. Uh, that's another common question we get. Um, but yeah, the other idea is, I mean, we've only had water in the chamber, right? So yeah. that's pretty much clean. But what we can do is we can still plunge air through the bottom. So we can just get a little bit of the end of the water out through the coffee. So I just generally do that a few times. It dries out the coffee bed. Then we just flip it upside down, unscrew your lid. And then you'll see that the, you know, the filter's sitting there. You can just take that off. There's your coffee grounds, and then we can just dump that. I don't know if you've got anything there handy. No. Yep, yeah, perfect, let's do that. So you can just empty your coffee grounds. I like to do that into the compost at home. You just basically do that what last raise, press it out, and then no. the coffee goes. Yeah. So a little bit of a rinse what's left. Most of the coffee's already gone, and then the chamber's already yeah. good to go. So the main thing is, at the end, just take out the plunger to dry. The seal should dry between use. And then that's it. That is beautiful and such a great result. Really love the simplicity of the design and you know the simplicity makes it more complex yep. in flavour and the result. Yep. But you don't have to necessarily worry about you know if you're taking out for a hike or you're going camping mm. then you don't have to worry about uh, weight, scales, Correct, yeah, all the to, measurements are yeah, there. everything yep. there. It's pretty much built into it, which mm. I love. And just the ease of use as well. Mm, like mm, you mm. don't have to really force it through. You know, sometimes yep. I'll, I'll really struggle with some of the seals, but this is just yep. it's so clean. Yes, and, yep, and the yep. result, it's perfect. Most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it from me. Yep. I'm Ride, your coffee coach. And as always, enjoy your brew. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks mate. Mm.